Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Walker. Great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we open with Walker watching a video of Gail, like the news coverage of right after Marv died. And Gail is saying, like, yeah, the person who did this is Cordell Walker. And even Denise says it later on. It's like, come on, we might have our issues with the Walkers, but do you really think he was a kid at the time? You really think Cordell killed dad? That's the thing. I'm like, you immediately jumped to that. Not any other fathom. Like, dude, you wouldn't think an adult did it. You think he probably set it up of like, oh, me and him, our families have had beef, so I gonna be the for the teenager that I am, I'm gonna kill Marv. It's like, no. Like, that's what I'm like. That's the thing of Gail so certain about it. She wasn't there. The only three witnesses are one of them's gone, and that's Marv. The other two are Denise and Cordell, but neither. I, I don't know how much Denise actually remembers about it. Cordell doesn't remember much either. It was a very traumatic moment as well. So, but Walker's wa uh, Cordell's watching this news footage, and it's like, yeah, his mom and dad told him never to watch it. And even he was like, maybe I was kind of actually looking for an excuse never to watch it. But now, with everything that's going on with the Davidsons, he wants to cut a deal with them after he wins the race. Liam's actually considering later on cutting a deal beforehand, but it's like, no, because if we do, that kind of makes us look weak in front of like the Davidson. So we need to kind of assure our victory first, then cut a deal. But all of that gets extremely, extremely complicated because... Denise has got her issues with Dan. Dan's the one that's supposed to be racing for them. Granted, it's not just all of this. Denise also has her issues with Dan with everything that he's been up to. He's been into some shady stuff. Or right? Let's not forget the whole Serrano thing. So, like, you're not squeaky clean yourself. He has a little bit of a checkered past on top of all that, too. Once again, that deals with um, the family situation he grew up in. Once again, why he latches on to the Davidsons as much as he does. But... Then... It's the reason why I have such an issue with the Davidsons is because it feels like every time you turn around, Gail is the one sh stoking the flames. Like, she's the one that, you know, Colton did, I guess at the time, Colton didn't realize the ramifications of what he was doing when he told, because he was hurt about the whole Stella thing, plus there's a part of him that's like, right, my mom and dad are fighting, so... He told his grandma something he probably shouldn't have told her, and now she ends up telling Denise. Now, Denise ended up going to August, and she had no right to do that. Once again, you're not supposed to talk to a person without their legal guardian there. She knows she was wrong. She even said it herself, like, she's got to look into this investigation before she ends up losing her job. And her mom's like, wait, you could lose your job? It's like, yeah, they could say that I'm abusing my power, which I would say you are, like, does no one else think this screams conflict of interest? You're reinvestigating, reopening the investigation of your own parents' murder and any and anything that evidence she finds, like even if it's true, it's I'm sure she had a non-biased third party obviously examine it, but it's still like it's tainted in my mind. I'm like, I think a good lawyer would be like, there's a conflict of interest here. You're the DA, you pulled out all the stops and resources because you have a personal uh stake in this, uh, and that's um your father's murder, but on top of that, you have a, your family has a personal vendetta against mine. To be fair, the Davidsons came with the beef. Like the Walkers were just doing their own thing. The Davidsons came back, and Gales brought nothing but heat the entire time. That's why I'm just like, I think Gales got her own secrets that she just hasn't told, or it's just it just might be that Gail doesn't have secrets. It could just be like she's just so hurt about Marv because it's like there's so much complicated stuff. Him and Abby used to have history, and the fact is that she was the one he originally loved that he was engaged to. Like, I'm sure that rubbed... Well, that they were the, well, they were engaged at one point in time, right? Or they were going to get married. Like, there was a deep tie there, so she's always going to have a little venom towards, like, right. It's like, because it makes you... I'm sure, like, on somewhere in your heart, it's like, right. Like, he w stayed with me, married me, but there, his art always belonged to Abby, you know, especially the fact is he confided into Abby about the secret child of uh, Gail's that's still alive, Denise's sibling. So, which once again, I'm still in the belief that it's Jerry. So I think that there's just there's a lot there bubbling beneath the surface for why Gail's got like so much spice for the Walkers. I don't think it like I think 
she already had so much issues with them because of their family's history. And then you add in Marv's death. She was just looking for an excuse. The Walkers did it. Because that's also the thing, too. If I remember correctly, the only reason why August found the lantern is because he fell and they found it under some debris and stuff. And I'm like, it's been 20-some years and no one's found that to now? Like, doesn't anyone think that's suspicious? To be fair, the Davidsons have probably avoided that place. Like, obviously, uh, Gail wasn't going to go near that. And, and neither was... Um, Denise, just because it's like, right, it just would have been a constant reminder of Marv's death. But still, it just seems, I mean, but I guess it's like, right, if it's under debris, it's just like, I guess at the time, like, no one bothered looking. Because I don't remember where the lantern was. Like, I remember August fell, but I don't remember if it was, like, already underneath some debris or was it debris calls from when he fell that the lantern was found. It's just interesting that during the investigation, maybe the argument is the cops back then didn't really do a thorough enough job. Maybe that's some legal, like, courtroom arguments that could be tossed around. So, you have all of that. And once again, back to Denise questioning August like that. And then Stella gets pissed at Colton because it's like, right, you had to rat my brother out to your mom. He's like, what are you even talking about? It's like, to be fair, he didn't. He ratted him, her, his August out to his grandmother who ratted him out because his grandmother was trying to get him to Colton to get to August to get the lantern, but he never did. So, and so like, the sad thing is like where Colton and Stella are, they're kind of like, it, you know, they are collateral damage for like this long standing beef between the families. So she's thinking like, right, Colton, you're not the person I thought you were. But even Colton's like, yeah, maybe this whole thing isn't worth fighting for anyway. You and mom are unhappy. You're not, you're fighting all the time. It's like, yeah, what's the point? Like nothing. This is supposed to be a fresh start. This was supposed to be a home and it's been nothing but. So... And that strikes a chord with Dan to the point that when Liam decides, oh, let's make a deal. He's like, nah, my son doesn't deserve 20 acres. He deserves the whole thing. I'm curious if that conversation with Colton hadn't happened, would Dan have been a lot more amenable to that deal? Probably not. Well, because initially, I think Denise was a little more open to the idea of a deal, maybe. But both sides kind of like got crushed on the weight of all of this because, well... Walker is getting ready for the race. He's button heads with his dad about everything. Um, I love Cassie kind of being the uh, his assistant coach, but he was like, I I never agreed to that. She's like, yeah, it's so what it's more of a vibe. I, I got that vibe that I definitely was your assistant coach. Um, but then Cordell finds out about the lantern from. Because I knew Jerry seeing him bury that lantern and realizing that this is all about the lantern. She goes back, so the secret ends up coming out. And so Cordell shows up and confronts Denise. He's like, here's the lantern. Like, the thing is, Cordell knew nothing about the lantern. He didn't know anything about this. August didn't tell him. August, to be told, didn't tell anyone. Because at the time, I don't think, at the, if I remember correctly, I don't think he recognized the significance of it. He's just like, oh, it's why well, I'm one of our lanterns here. He didn't realize the significance of what that would be. So, you know, he probably is blaming him because later on, Stella's like, yeah, he's in his room being all emo. He's probably blaming himself because he's like, right, I set this all in motion. I should have never agreed to go with Denise, but she should have never done what she did. That was overstepping the boundary. And that's what pissed Cordell off. It's like, I've tried to do nothing but cooperate and be good to your family. And this is what you do. You're so stuck on your like, I get it. You're looking into your dad's and but you could have come to me. But instead, what you know, you couldn't get in contact with me. I get that. But you use my son instead. Like, who cares if he found the lantern you still had no right talking to a minor without his guardian like maybe she didn't but it's still kind of it's weird it's weird that you did that and so Cordell was like fine you want it war I didn't want it I wanted to stop this but Cordell got so caught up in the moment he's like fine let's go to war then you know and so Denise got what she wanted in the end but that's the thing like this cycle just keeps going and going and going. Every time you try to take the right steps, just certain things don't play out and veer you in the wrong direction. And like I said, I just think Gail is that, like, she's whispering in everyone's ear. She's getting to Denise. She's getting to Dan. She's getting to Colton. That is just like her personal vendetta. I think out of anyone in the family, she carries that more. Colton somewhat carried it, but not really. Especially, like, if he really carried it, he would have never gotten as close to Stella as he did. Denise, despite coming back and, yeah, there being the 
Cole, the uh, Davidson's and Walker beef, she still kind of worked with Walker. Yeah, there were some issues there, but still, everything was pretty copacetic. Dan, he's ride or die with the Davidson family, so their beef is his beef. That's why I feel like there's definitely a lot more going on potentially between Dan and Gail that we just haven't touched on. I just feel like Gail knows a lot more about some of the shadier side of things than she kind of lets on. So, there's all of that. Bonham saying that he's going to be the one that ends up racing. Um, you even have Gail going to Marv's grave and seeing the flowers there. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, the woman you were with and the woman you married. And breaks off a piece of the flowers of Abby left. That even later on at the end of the episode, Abby sees it sticking out of her hat. She did that on purpose, too. Just to bother Abby. You know it did. And Bob, or, uh, Abby just kind of looks down. Just kind of like, <sighs> like, it's just like such... Mental and psychological warfare, like, Gail is on another level. Like, come on, dude. It's just, that, once again, nothing against the actor. I think the actress who plays Gail does such an amazing job. Because it's like, that character is just so infuriating. Because you're just like, she's the one that, like, gets the gears turning. She's the one that sets so much stuff in motion. Granted, don't get it twisted. The Walkers have played their part in that, too. Bonham's secrets and Abby's secrets. Because even... Walker yelled at uh, Cordell yelled at him. It's like, are you do not realize, Dad, that your secrets are what end up hurting us the most, hurting us more than the Davidsons ever could, and that's true. Like a lot of this is fallout from their secrets. I mean, Abby is still sitting on the biggest one of all, and the fact is, the moment that truth comes out, how's Gail going to react? You know. It's like, wait, you've known all these years. Wait, Marv, because she's going to be pissed too, because it's like, wait, Marv knew and he hid it from me? You knew and hit. She already doesn't know. She super hate. It's not even dislike. She hates Abby. And that's just going to make her hate her even more. Already going to hate the Walker family even more. I, I don't know, man. I did, though, like that this episode did lead to a lot of heart to hearts between a lot of the families. Like, for example, Stella talking to her dad, like, right, will the Davidson still come after us? Like, they're, they're, they think we're the bad guys, but then the Walker's like, no one's, there's no bad guy in this situation. Yeah, we have our beef with the Davidsons, they have their issues with us. No one's the bad guy here. Everyone is just trying to do what's best for their families, and you can't fault anyone for that. You know, family is very important. It's important to Cordell, it's important to his entire family. You know, I mean, especially like to his parents and stuff. So <sighs> that's the complicated rub of it all. But I do like that uh, Bonham and him had a heart to heart where he. Um, he initially was getting to the point where he was like, right, I'll listen to that deal you wanted to make. But for Cordell, it's like, yeah, we're past deal making. I am going to win this. But he was talking to his dad about the fact is that his dad doesn't have to hold on to so much because. He opens up about, the fact is, I think he had talked to, was it, um, oh yeah, the Cassie about it. He opened up about, the fact is, the Davidsons had their issues. When him and Marv were younger, there was no beef, but the moment they got older, just, it all came rearing its ugly head, especially when it came to, like, the land dispute and stuff. The fact is that, you know, I'm, once again, you throw in Abby, and I think that complicates things even more, but he says, and even admits he kept pushing off the race because he was like, right, I know there's got to be a better way, but Marv, for whatever reason, and I think this is going to be the important reason, is he kept putting off the race over and over again. The current theory that him and Abby have is, could it be that he wanted to get his child back so he needed the money and he was so desperate for the land because he needed it uh, in a situation to necessarily like take care of his entire family, especially the child he was eventually going to get back? Maybe that's the um, argument. Because cause Bonham could have been like, oh, we still don't know why. Because even then, that's just a theory between him and Abby. But also, he doesn't want Cordell to know about the secret love the, the Not love child, but secret uh, child that's still living that Marvin Gale had. But... You know, in retrospect now, that I'm, really quickly while I'm here, obviously... Um, Jerry says, right, as someone who is not of Walker blood or Davidson blood, she was kind of the official in this. Now, I'm not saying she knows she's all Davidson and she 
gave them the win or something like it's nothing like that but i'm curious if that's going to undo the deal when it turns out jerry is a davidson because it kind of nolan voids everything because she was supposed to be the middle ground because she's not of the blood so maybe that nolan voids the deal a little bit because it is it makes it so like right you know and maybe it's not that the walkers use that but maybe jerry will use that to her advantage if it turns out that she is one once again that's my number one theory is that she's a davidson but if, if if it turns out she's not a David, if she turns out to be a David, then maybe she'll decide to do that. If, you know, there's still the possibility she might not be the secret child that Abby and Bonham are aware of. But circling back, Bonham admitted that he was actually kind of relieved when Marv died. Just because with him, it's like, right, I thought all of this would end, but it's like, despite no matter what I do, this whole feud rears its ugly head. It's The past still comes back to haunt me when I thought it all died when uh, Marv did. It is also the thing, too, of like, yeah, it is interesting timing that the Davidson just happened to come back now, just, and all this fallout of their return. Um... But Walker talks to his dad about, right, you told me to kind of, you know, you handle so much on your own. I don't know why you have to be so stubborn, dad. Like, let me and the rest of the family walk with you, beside you on this. You kind of keep us at arm's length and he apologizes and tries to, he plans to fix it. I mean, I think Walker luckily has a perspective of he tried to handle so much on his own and he learned the hard way of like, you know, I think he learned that lesson at a younger age than his dad did because his dad's still learning and that's still a hard habit for him to break. But once again, that's where Walker gets his stubbornness from. It was a neat conversation between him and Cassie, though, about family. Um... Which is like Cassie gets like the whole notion of doing whatever you can to protect your family, protect your own. But at the same time, she was saying like, right, my um, my partner's family. So I guess there's some complications with her own family, too. I'm wondering what that's all about. Not less. I was like, I, I was about to say, I, I doubt that's going to be the I was I was wondering about that, like what her circumstances are going to be. Um, Cassie's like the fact is that she referenced her partner's family. So I guess she must not have much of a family situation herself but i do love that um bonham made them point of like yeah every family has a stray or two and i'm like yeah that's kind of cool you have about three you you have mickey you have trey and now you have cassie so and when it came time for the race uh you could tell colton and stella they keep looking at each other because they both feel bad about things being what they are and even dan's like despite everything like even dan like he likes that obviously like stella means something to him that relationship means something to him and he's kind of bummed like right are you two going to be okay and colton says no but it, it doesn't really matter that doesn't really matter at the end of the day if we're okay or not it, it doesn't they don't need to be so um obviously Cordell says that this place is home to him. He never realized how much of a part of him it has been uh, until, you know, the previous day that it's like, right, this place is too important to him. It's been in their family. It's theirs. And he planned on winning. And the moment he's saying all that, I'm like, oh, he's going to end up losing, isn't he? And there's extenuating circumstances, but still. And Dan's motivation is he wants to do something for his... But even Colton's like, no, no, Dad, don't let that be the motivation. He's like, at the end of the day, I don't want what I said yesterday to be the reason why... Like, I don't want the Walkers to lose their home. But for Dan, it's like, what you said, even if it was in the heat of the moment, it didn't make it any less true. So I want to do something, that a, a home that you can call home. And he even says, when I win, I want um, land nearby, like the ranch nearby or whatever... Uh, so that I can be still be on a property. Me and Denise don't have to live together, but I still want to live close enough for, toward uh, with my son. So, um, and what did um, what did Dan do? The moment he, he's like, oh yeah, like uh, oh a tree house. He's talking about like oh like uh, I can't believe you put a tree house here. Probably tear that down. It's like that's such a dick thing to do. He's also saying like oh your mom's garden. She worked so hard on it, so I'll leave it be. It's like Walker ain't say. Walker didn't do any trash talking, yet you felt the need to do all that. So, it was a close race through through and through. Um, and the moment Walker tried to do the right thing, and he went back for Dan, and Dan's like, you could have just gone on. He was like, yeah, I could have, but I, I help people. I save people, Dan. It's part of my job. It's what I do. It's part of who I am. So, don't assume, like, you know, it's like, right, it just, in my personal opinion, just shows that Walkers are better men than you are. 
just shows you his strength of character in comparison to your own. Because when the time came, he stopped for you and gave you a chance. You didn't. You took that opportunity. And I guarantee you, you ain't going to tell anybody about it, even though... Like, because the only people that were there that saw it was him and Walker. They're the only ones that are aware. So I'm sure Dan's not going to say anything. Like, I, I would have, I thought, the, I was hoping, like, if he won, he'd be like, no, it's not fair. We have to do this over again. It's like, what are you talking about? You won. It's like, yes, but Walker stopped for me. He could have easily won. I thought that would have been an honorable thing to do, but he does. Nope. He wins and he's like celebrating with his family because despite everything, he's thinking, like, no, nah, I need to do this for my family. It's for my family. So even if I have to be dirty with it, I'm going to win. The strap did break, so it makes you wonder why he wasn't looking. Did Dan cut it or what? Because Abby did say, like, Gail was going to play dirty. So, Because Bonham gave him the idea of, like, right, turn right. Left is the fastest way, but the trees are overgrown. That's why Dan got whacked off the horse like he did. But just everything went wrong all at once. Like, by the time Walker and uh, Dan were on their way there to the... Uh, that to the ranch, lo and behold, uh, Bonham's being arrested. Marv's blood was found on a lantern, but Bon is the one getting arrested because I guess his DNA's up there too. I mean, to be fair, he handled the lantern, but I, I think that was, I don't remember if that was with gloves on or not. It might have been. And Gail's got that look of disdain in her eyes. It's like, but first and foremost, you spent the, like, I'm curious what you're going to say because the entire time you said it was Cordell that did it. Now you're saying like, oh, it's, Bottom who did it, but if that's the case, is she still gonna be like, well, it was a Walker that did it regardless. Even if it, like, maybe she's gonna say like, Bottom's the one that set it all up, but Walker was the one who actually, I mean, Cordell's the one who actually activated it or something like that. That's what I'm curious because you know this is gonna obviously turn into a whole court situation. I mean, just as they're heading to the home stretch, that's when he's watching in the distance his dad getting arrested, his dad as he's being drift, uh, driven away by the cops, finding out like, damn. Um, we lost because the whole deal is that the family that loses has to immediately vacate the property as quickly as possible. So they all win in the end. It's like, oh, celebratory. The Walker family gets the two blow if they lost the the house. They they lost they lost the race. They lost the the land. Now Bottom's getting arrested for murder. Um, there's just I don't think any of this is what anyone thinks it is. I think there's going to be the, like a real like last minute twist or development to be like, cuz I don't think Bottom is responsible. Yeah, he had his issues with Marv, even admitted, yeah, Marv dying was probably like it worked out for me. He's like the sad thing is I kind of I was kind of relieved when he died. But there's also the element of I I I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure. There's just, it's just, there's something that we're missing a piece to all of this. Maybe it's Marv's intention, once again, why he was so adamant about getting everything back, why he made that deal with Bonham in the first place. There's something there. Uh, once again, in the back of my mind, is like, is it actually Gil that actually did it? I don't think so, but who knows? I don't, I highly doubt it, but maybe it really was an accident. Once again, the only way they're going to find out is if Cordell goes back to that day and remembers. He's probably going to have to go to someone to kind of hypnotize him to remember what happened. Um, Liam did kind of give his dad this look like a nod. I think was saying like, right, don't say anything. You're being arrested because anything you say will be used against you. So do not talk to anyone except for your own lawyer, what, whether that's Liam or not. Probably can't be because it's a conflict of interest because it's family. So either way, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this. This was uh, some wild developments. I figured it was going to be a loss. I just didn't expect all these other extenuating circumstances to be going down. So we shall see what happens next. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.